Now people with diabetes have to take really good care of their feet. They're prone to many feet problems. And if you have a podiatrist available, let the podiatrist see them on a regular basis. And ideally, the podiatrist should be cutting their toenails as well and keeping a very close eye on their feet. So why is it that people with diabetes have such problems with their feet? Well, the first is the macrovascular disease through the process of atherosclerosis can reduce the blood supply to the legs. The blood vessels get clogged up, the large blood vessels reducing blood supply. But as well as that, in poorly controlled diabetes, we can get the microvascular disease as well. So if you've got a combination of macrovascular disease and microvascular disease, that are two, there's two effects there that can exacerbate the ischemia that a particular tissue can suffer from. And then we know we have the, the neuropathy, the disease of the nerves. So in sensory neuropathy, people with diabetes can lose the sensation from their feet. So they can have something in their shoe, and whereas in you that would make it uncomfortable or give pain and you'd shake it out, they might not realise. So it can cause ongoing trauma to their feet. Or their toes could be rubbing on the inside of their shoes, but they don't get the discomfort, they don't get the pain, therefore there's a further opportunity there for the feet to be traumatised. And it's less common, but you also get motor neuropathy in diabetes. And instead of the toes being straight, because of the neuropathy in the muscles in the foot, the toes can curl, you can get clawing of the toes. And this means the pressure damages the bottom of the toes, and also the top of the toes can rub on, the, rub on their shoes. So let's look at what happens in someone with diabetes typically. So let's suppose we have a, let's have a, let's have a, you know, we've got a, let's suppose this is a toe. So this is supposed to be a toenail here, not a very good one. So here we've got uh, a big toe, for example. Now, because there's pressure effects, the skin gets thicker. And people with diabetes are very prone, because of these pressure effects, to develop callus, hard, thick skin. So they develop hard, thick skin on their feet. And here there's a particular area of thick callus on the bottom of this patient's toes. And this is going to mean that the pressure from this area of callus is going to press on the tissues. Because here we have the bone in the toe. There's the next bone there. Now because there's callus there, and there's bone there, the pressure, as they walk and just use their feet normally, because there's pressure going down from the bone onto the callus, you're going to get areas between the bone and the callus which become ischemic. In essence, you get, you get a pressure sore. This bit is squeezed and you get a pressure sore because the capillaries are closed and the blood supply doesn't get through anymore. This means that we can develop an area of necrosis just here. That can actually die off. Now, when you have necrotic tissue, it's likely to start to decompose because bacteria get into it. So we're going to get bacteria growing in this necrotic tissue. But remember, the patient has sensory neuropathy, so they don't feel it. You know, if you had a necrosed area of decomposing infected tissue in your foot, you'd be in a lot of pain. But if the peripheral nerves are damaged, these pain sensations are not going to get up the leg to get back to the brain. So the infection here gets worse and worse. But when the patient looks at it, or even when you look at it from a superficial point of view, you don't see this area of infection because it's covered by this hard callus here. But if you've got a high index of suspicion for it, the correct treatment is to cut off this hard callus with sharp debridement, ideally a podiatrist, but you can learn to do it as well. Whoever you are, you can learn to do this. I, I used to cut off hard callus from feet. And that will expose the area underneath here, which can then be packed to try and clean it up. But if it's not spotted, if the hard callus stays in place, the infection is going to get worse. It's already ischemic, 
and now it's infected. And the bacteria are going to release toxins and the toxins from the bacteria will kill more and more tissue. And what this means is that pathways of tissue can be infected and the infection can track. And it doesn't have to go that far before it tracks into the bone. So this area of infection can get worse, but it can also track the infection into the bone. And as you remember, bones are hollow in the middle, they have a medullary cavity. And once the infection is in the medullary cavity, it can spread throughout the bone, causing osteomyelitis. And once we get infection in the bone, once there's osteomyelitis, it's virtually impossible to treat. And then the treatment then becomes amputation of the infected area. So sharp debridement of callus at an early stage. Increase foot awareness. Look after the condition of the skin in the patient's foot. If there is any infection or lesions in the feet, take that extremely seriously. Treat it aggressively with good local wound management with necessary systemic antibiotics and aim at all costs to prevent the development of the osteomyelitis which can result in amputation.